Good morning everyone. My name is Cliff Austin and welcome to the number 20 painting of the Create 30 Challenge by Elaine Picard. This is the number 14 video that I'll post on YouTube. And um, please look me up on cliffaustin.com. Don't forget to check out Curtis Art Center in uh, Greenwood Village and Mary Williams Fine Arts in Boulder. She's doing a 30 for 30 Abundant Hope project that is very much worthwhile. Today I thought I'd try something different and try and start from scratch. And we're going to look at this particular painting, um, actually photograph. And what I normally do is I start out with a thumbnail. So it's a fairly average um, fairly average photograph and so my first step is just to try and get some basic shapes uh, to know where um, my pieces and parts are going to go you know their shapes and so this is going to be a dark value and this is going to be a dark value and this is going to be a dark value and my medium values are right in here Now obviously the sky is going to be the lightest. So what I'm looking for is basic geometric shapes. And I'm looking for my light, medium, and dark shapes. So we could say that this is the dark values. And so that is a dark shape. My medium shape would be medium value shapes. Are these guys right here? And obviously the lightest shape is in here. So we could take this as my light shape. This as the dark shape. Right, and the light and medium shape, uh, the medium shape is right in here, something like that. So that's the basic idea, just to get your basic um, geometric graphic abstract shapes. From there, I'm going to try and modify it. So right now I have the horizon line kind of in the center. I'm going to drop that down. I'm going to make that look a little bit more interesting by dropping it down. And I'm going to take these shapes and try and get a little bit more interest going. By redesigning those shapes just a little bit. So by moving this down a little bit, I think that's a little bit more interesting. Now on my third sketch, I'll take what I like um, from my previous sketches, and I'm going to bring this down a little bit further, just to make it more um, dramatic, maybe? more. To me, more interesting. I'm going to add a little bit more emphasis on the shapes. <laughs> and try to take some of this kind of mediocre photograph and build it into something a little bit more interesting. So I like this dark shape, I like this shape, and I like this. So we have a straight line against the curve, we have two close shapes and one separated shape, one, two, three dark shapes. We have this, which is going to be kind of a lead in, and design is really important. 
And so that is my idea for this painting. So we'll take that and start dropping in the really cool stuff. And we'll go fairly fast because we don't have a lot of time. So I'm going to start with my thirds. Right in here. I like that. And we're going to take our sketch and from the photograph and the sketches that we've made, we're going to try and get this in here fairly quickly. Just like that. And I normally start with my darks. And I concentrate on what those darks are doing. So, this being the shape up front. I'm going to put that in there. Just get that shape in there. The next shape is this one over here. Like that. I'm going to add just a little bit more coolness to that. That means I'm going to add just a little bit more blues in there. And the one in the back is going to have even more blue a slightly different value because I want it to look like it's going further back. So this shape is going to look kind of like that. Now I can go back and reinforce some of those shapes um, just to define this edge in here and some of this. So I've got this layer, this layer, and this layer. Next thing to do is to put in the medium values. Oh wait, probably wouldn't hurt to do this pure blue, but on second and third thought, I'm going to wait for that to do that later. I'm going to put some of this in here. And because it's a ground plane, a horizontal plane of sorts, it's going to get a lot of light. So we're just going to make that a light value. <coughs> it can actually go really, really light, couldn't it? Let's make that a really light value. while we're just filling in our shapes and spaces here. And this really nice brush, um, scrub brush, I guess. It's in here. There's some of that over here. We can make that quite light. Something like 
that. And this is a shape that's way in the back, so we make sure that it's soft. And now let's put in that really pretty blue water. Water is... Um, to make water look like water on a painting, it's usually a different value, a different temperature. So, in this case, this water is reflecting the sky, and it's closer to us than actually the sky is. So we're going to take that water and make it a really nice pretty blue. Something like that. Just fill in that space. And we have this dark green reflection here. And then let's do the sky. I'm taking some ultramarine, ultramarine blue and some titanium white. I'm making a nice sky color. Nice Colorado blue. Just filling in the shape. Just taking care of all that white space. There we go. Now I have my shapes covered, my uh, values, relative values in place. Now I can go back and really pay attention to some fun elements in here. This background shape I want kind of soft. There we go. Now the shapes are on place. The values and the colors are basically in there. I've gotten rid of all the white and now I can evaluate whether the sky is too light or too dark, too big, too small. But again, I'm going to start off in the darks. Take my sap green and my burnt umber and exaggerate the darks just a little bit. Just so that I can get um, a little bit more interest going on in there. Something like that. Yep. This shape in the background needs a little bit of texture. A little bit of interest. But it's going to stay soft so it stays in the background. It's got a little bit of modeling in here. I think I'll add some of that. Maybe a little bit over here so it's not so lonely. Yeah, something like that. And this shape seems to be the right value but it's not standing out as much as I'd like, so I'm going to make it even a lighter value. Give it some... Give it some 
difference. A little bit of difference going on in there. And this gravel bar is really pretty. It's kind of a flesh color. I'm going to push the temperature of that a little bit. I'm also going to push the value of that. So it's going to be warmer and it's going to be lighter, I hope. And it's going to be like that. Then we're going to add a little bit of stuff over here. And we're getting there. Like that. So if we step back and look and squint at it, we'll see that we can use a lot of different stuff to help make this even more interesting. To do that, what if we made this just a little bit more interesting? a little too harsh. We can tone it down a little bit. Define some edges and shapes. Throw in some places where the sky, the light from the sky doesn't quite reach everywhere. Cool, cool. Take some sap green and some cadmium orange to make a nice, really nice looking color. And then we can use some smaller brushes for some finer shapes to reveal a little bit more um, definition. Right in there. And this seems a little too harsh, so I'm just going to help that along a little bit. Put some greens in there. Some lovely shapes right in there. And on and on it goes. You can take this to the point where these pieces and parts start to look almost photographic. Personally, I think a painting should look like a painting. A photograph naturally looks like a photograph. But that's just me.